everybody. Welcome back to Healthy Happy Hour here at Care for the Kids. I'm Angela Berg, nurse practitioner. We are lucky enough to get another episode with Dr. Joshi being in town. While Amy is out recovering, I am taking full advantage of um, picking Dr. Joshi's brain for all of our benefit. And so today, what I really asked him to come and share was his favorite wellness tips for his patients. So prevention of complications and wellness are really our focus today. And so I gave you that homework and you, he promptly sent me a list. He had them ready. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Dr. Joshi, to talk about what are your favorite wellness and prevention tips for sure, patients. I'm, I'm very glad to be here and thank you for the opportunity. Um, so as far as wellness in pediatric rheumatology goes, there are a couple of things which come to my mind. Uh, I think at the top of my list would be sun protection. And uh, many people don't realize how important that is if you have an autoimmune disorder, mm -hmm. because there are cells that are present uh, just below our skin, which are called as uh, antigen presenting cells. Mm -hmm. And they are the ones, they, they get irritated by exposure to the sun, unprotected exposure to the sun. And then they go and talk to their friends, other types of white blood cells, and give them the report that, you know, it's time to mount that inflammation up. Oh. And that is why we always want uh, any part of the body which is not covered by clothing should have sunblock on it. Typically, the recommendation is SPF factor 30 and above, but if possible, we want to use SPF factor 50 and above. I was going to say, I think I always recommended when I worked with the CHLA team, I know that there are studies that were released that said above 30 is, is no different. I always say 50 is magic. Just use 50. Ab absolutely. And, and the other thing that you really want to look for before buying a, a sunblock product is whether it is broad spectrum or not, mm. because that does make a big difference. So just those two major things to look out for, SPF factor 50 and above, and the words broad spectrum uh, yeah. is set, set on it, because we want to be, we want protection from the whole ultraviolet right spectrum. Right. And many people don't realize that even if it's a cloudy day, mm -hmm. the ultraviolet rays are still out there. Right. And, um, and uh, these days we have the luxury of having apps that we can actually track of how high or low the ultraviolet uh, you know, rays oh, are uh, yeah, at, yeah. At, any given, in, at any given location and weather and time of the day. Right. Um, but uh, general recommendation is to avoid spending time out in the sun between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. if you can. Mm -hmm. And if you have to be out in the sun, then protect yourself with clothing. So for example, wear long sleeve shirts, mm -hmm. wear long legged trousers, mm -hmm. and most importantly, protect neck and above. Mm -hmm. And many people don't like to do that. Many and they don't think about the ears. They don't think In about your the ears. ears. Show. Uh -huh. Especially the top of the ears uh -huh. is what people most commonly miss. Mm -hmm. um, one easy way to protect your face is to use a hat that has a wide yeah. rim. And uh, that, that will protect not only your face, but also your ears as well as your neck. Right. But, um, uh, but sometimes uh, that's not possible. I, I, uh, I, I, in my own clinical practice, met many teenagers who don't want to do that uh, <laughs> because of, uh, you know, they just don't like the look of it mm -hmm. and, <laughs> mm -hmm. and other reasons. So, so they have to really protect themselves using sunblock. Yeah. And um, um, in, in my practice, most of the major flares of a disease like lupus that I have seen is when families go to a beach vacation mm -hmm. or they go to Florida or Disney and then in the whole excitement of the vacation they, m they, they, forget. they completely forget sure. sun protection and that would flare uh, 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 autoimmune disease like lupus uh, very commonly. Pretty easily. I always think the um, cute hats I would love to have those cute sun hats. They're not all created equal, correct? So we really should look at labels to make sure they say that they've got sun protection or UV protection in their material. Yes, right? yes, absolutely. And uh, 
um, th there are uh, a whole range of products uh, available out there. It depends upon the kind of weather that you live in. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if you live in a very hot and arid climate like uh, like here, you you might want to wear something that has a few fenestrations yes. around it so that you don't get very... Breathe. Hot. Yeah. You can breathe. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. But yes, paying attention to the material um, of the hat and it being uh, protective against the ultraviolet rays is also very important. Yes. I have a funny hat story that I'll just share quickly. I found, because I love those hats, but I'm a short person and I always think it makes me look like a mushroom, but being very pale, I need to protect from the sun. So I actually have decided um, that I'm just going to embrace the look and I found one that I can roll up to travel because I love doing my tropical vacations with my daughter. It can roll up and go in my suitcase and and then travel well and then I just I just embrace it. I, ca I call it like my scuba Steve look <laughs> with the with the shady hat and yeah. it just it yeah. is what it is. I don't want skin cancer so this is my trade-off. Yeah yeah and just Two quick, po well, your, your funny hat story uh, reminded me of uh, something funny as well. I uh, trained with uh, a, a professor of rheumatology, and her practice was when she used to run her um, lupus clinic, she would actually have it as a part of the triage, where is your hat? Oh, that and they would uh, say, she, where yeah, is your yeah. hat? I'm gonna <laughs> remember was, uh, that. She was so uh, particular about mm -hmm. sun protection. Um, and and to and to complement the other point that you brought up, even if you don't have an autoimmune disease like lupus, mm -hmm. I think it makes total sense to wear sunblock if you are otherwise healthy because mm -hmm. it does protect us against the risk of skin cancer. Yes, indeed. So, indeed. so anybody and everybody should be should be wearing sunblock. Yes. Um, um, regardless. Yes. So besides sun protection, we have to worry about heat protection and hydration. We're making sure we're staying hydrated. Talk a little bit about how you talk to your patients or what your goals are for your patients that you share about hydration. Yeah, that is a, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a it's a tough topic because it's easier said than done. Mm -hmm. And um, um, if, if unless proven otherwise, most of us are chronically dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I always tell that uh, uh, sticking with uh, something that gives you a reminder mm -hmm. that it's time to drink water might be the way to go. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there are different products that one can use. One of them being uh, a smart water bottle mm. that actually does uh, remind you that it's time to drink water and mm -hmm. you can easily use that in conjugation with an app that lets you put um, a daily target mm -hmm. and uh, it, you know, it's customizable and it's very helpful if it comes to someone who is very busy and mm -hmm. needs constant reminders. Mm -hmm. uh, similar to uh, improving your posture, mm -hmm. unless you unless you get consistent reminders throughout the day, it is very hard to to achieve that. So uh, so so that's that's one strategy that one can adopt. Mm -hmm. And um, the other one would be to, um, and I'm not sure if that has been talked about already, is to pay attention to the color of the urine. No, we have not talked about that. That's good. Yes. You, and every time we talk about hydration, we talk about frequency, but we've never talked about what the urine looks like. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So um, that, that, that is something that uh, I, I find very interesting. Uh, if you are staying well hydrated, the color of the urine should be straw colored. Okay. And then it, it, just, it just becomes darker from there and it yeah. becomes yellow and a, a deep so yellow. So the clearer or not even noticing that you went is better. Correct. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you have uh, straw colored or clear urine, that means you're doing a good job with Perfect. keeping yourself hydrated. Um, and of course, the, the daily requirement for how much water to intake varies uh, given a lot of different factors. Mm -hmm. Your age and the type of uh, climate that you live in. Uh, your level of physical activity mm -hmm. um, um, and, and other things which uh, I'm not mentioning. Um, but I, I do use this as a yardstick 
to whether you are doing a good job hydrating yourself what or not. What are your urine? Where's your hat and what <laughs> does your urine look like? <laughs> I love it. How about one last thing I'd like to sneak in a little bit on is physical activity because we talked about in um, the first segment that we talked about rheumatic diseases in children not being something that people think about very often, um, but then they often think that they shouldn't stay busy. We, we know staying active is something we should all do. So talk about how you talk um, to your patients about setting goals and what your recommendations are. Uh, as far as staying active. Yes, yes. Well, our bodies are supposed to be in motion. That's uh, how our bodies have evolved. And it's very recent that we have s seen a change in the decline in physical activity. And um, that actually, uh, it, it, it has proven counterintuitive because our bodies, when they don't move, that in by itself that you are sedentary and not moving is a risk factor for a whole a whole host of different types of diseases um, these diseases include uh, inflammatory diseases like metabolic syndrome which you were uh, talking about in the in the uh, in the pre in the previous segment but also nervous nervous d diseases pertaining to the nervous system mm -hmm. so a kinesophobia or a fear of moment is mm. actually considered to be one of the triggers of a more serious disorder like fibromyalgia. Very so, interesting. Yeah, so not moving or the fear of moment or thinking that if I move, I'm going to cause damage to my body, mm -hmm. whether you have an underlying illness or you are otherwise healthy is one of the triggers for the confusion of the uh, autonomic nervous system, things like dysautonomia. Mm -hmm. So if, if you want to prevent um, uh, throwing our nervous system into, into that crazy loop, I think maintaining regular physical activity is very important. My goodness, I have so many more subjects I wanna have you back for and um, appreciate you sharing your expertise with Thank us you. so I'm, much. I'm and again, we are so lucky that you're Thank here you. and we appreciate you being here. And we appreciate you taking the time to stick with us today. Hope you enjoyed um, and learned something new because if we're not learning today, we're in trouble. And so stay right where you are and we'll be back with another segment with our favorite nutritionist, Pam Long, here just shortly. Stay right where you are. Welcome back. Thanks so much for staying with us. Joining me again is my favorite nutritionist in all the world, Pam Long. Thanks for being here. Of course. What Pam is joining us for um, today we have on our agenda is to start talking about how to um, really focus on physical activity and not get uh, in our own way and get derailed. I think we've had our New Year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. We did really good. Now we've started to fall back to old habits and the way that we get in our own way. So Pam, can you talk about some ideas that you can share with us on ways to get out of our own way yeah. and start thinking about this in a healthy way to not overwhelm ourselves? So thinking about this in the short term is dangerous. Going to the gym and saying, I'm gonna go two hours a day, seven days a week, I'm gonna work full time, I'm gonna have a family, that may not be a realistic for you. And at this point, you might be saying, oh my gosh, like what's happening? I'm failing. My New Year's re resolutions of going to the gym aren't happening. So maybe stop thinking about this as let's lose weight now. Think about it for the rest of your life. Give yourself a couple of years to make yourself a new goal of being physically active as a part of your daily life. Um, being very realistic about work, family, and getting it and making it a priority. And if you need to have your family join in with you, 
you have them join in with you. Have dance around in the foyer for 30 minutes with your kids. That is great physical activity and it's a lot of fun. What an easy way to get the whole family involved too. That's so, so much important. fun. Have your kids have their own playlist and you dance around with them mm -hmm. for 30 minutes. And you don't even have to do it full 30 minutes. You can divide it into 15, 15. Each kid gets 20 minutes with their parents to dance mm -hmm. around. And you can do that one day a week. That's one day a week less that you have to go to the gym and mm -hmm. you get to spend quality time with your kids. That's so important mm -hmm. too. That quality family time mm -hmm. is so important. And I think making it realistic was key to what you said. Yes. For I always find myself being envious of um, somebody else at the gym who's looking like, and, I, and then you hear them talking because you know that you eavesdrop when you're in the gym. And you, you hear them talking about how long and how dedicated and committed they are. And I'm like, nobody's more dedicated or committed than me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we easily get peer pressured in without even realizing those people aren't purposely peer pressuring. We're really peer pressuring ourselves mm -hmm. to try and have those unrealistic goals. Mm -hmm. Even simple things like I know um, we've, we've had talks before about parking a little further back at the grocery store so mm -hmm. that you're increasing your steps. Um, talk about other little nuances you think that are helpful that you've come across in time or that you encourage people. So I am a big stair taker. Oh. I highly recommend that is a great place for somebody who doesn't do any physical activity to start doing physical activity. Start with, okay, this week, one time I'm going to go up the stairs. One time. And the next week, I'm going to do it twice in a week. That's how you can start with those little goals. We are definitely sedentary at work, a lot of us. Um, it's time to kind of kickstart that, and that's such a lovely little goal to have. Mm -hmm. It's lovely. Anytime you can, take the stairs. And in most of our workplaces, I think the stairs are secluded, so mm -hmm. nobody's watching you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to. Of course, you could grunt if you age like me, you mm -hmm. grunt, and that's my sign of age. But mm -hmm. you you can do it at your own pace. Mm -hmm. You're not being watched by anyone. Mm -hmm. So um, picking your place of doing that activity, I think, is important, too. But that's mm -hmm. a great way of just adding the extra steps. Mm -hmm. I always am big on not telling people to just focus maybe on the scale so much as Focus on your non-scale victories, mm -hmm. your things that are, your clothes fitting better, and the, that I, hey, I did that flight of stairs now without being so out of breath at the top. Mm -hmm. um, I think I agree with you. Those things are also important. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea of the whole family going together and it being just fun things that nobody thinks is, is exercise. Mm -hmm. Dance parties, yes, nobody thinks so those are exercise. Fun. You could do mm -hmm. Saturday nights, get glow sticks, shut mm -hmm. the lights off, you know, and you can divide, like I said, you can divide it between kids. You can do 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night, whatever you can do. Mm -hmm. Find out what your kids are loving, what songs, and see, you learn a lot about them too. Mm -hmm. And they are available on YouTube and Spotify and all that. So it should be really easy to have an individual playlist and get your grandparents involved. Get, get everybody involved. Right. And it's, it's really inexpensive. So hopefully you don't have to do a gym membership to do that. Right. Kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And what we say always, a body in motion stays in motion. Mm -hmm. And so even with grandparents, mm -hmm. modify and just be active together mm -hmm. and make it a fun adventure. Mm -hmm. That's such a great idea. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to lose your motivation after New Year's resolutions when you feel like you were fighting so hard. But if you just fit it into your lifestyle, mm -hmm. it will much, uh, much easier be able to just fit in natural mm -hmm. and become, pretty soon you'll be more active than you even realize that you're being. So that's awesome. Give yourself a couple of years to really make this a part of your life forever. Develop new habits. Yep. Very mm -hmm. good, very mm -hmm. good. As always, Pam, thanks so much for Thank joining you. us and having great ideas and bringing great information for all of us. And don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more mm -hmm. Healthy Happy Hour from Cure for the Kids.
thanks for sticking with us. What another exciting time of Healthy Happy Hour that we've had. Thank you, Dr. Joshi, for sharing some of your favorite health tips and wellness tips that you like to make sure all your patients are aware of. And particularly in our environment, really worrying about sunscreen. No, even um, though those kids on those medications need to be extra precautious, we all need those precautions. Um, as well as thanks to Pam Long for joining us again for amazing information about how to not give up on those physical activity goals, having those dance parties at home with your kids, turning it into family adventures, and pretty soon your active lifestyle is just your active lifestyle and you're more active than you realize you've been. No more running out of breath, no more beating yourself up for not sticking with an unrealistic goal. So. Um, one foot in front of the other, just like we always say, you are worth it, your health is worth it. Thanks so much for joining us and here at Healthy Happy Hour, we look forward to seeing you again next month. Stay tuned and don't forget to send us in any of your recommendations for um, future topics for us to have on the, on the show. Thanks so much. National health.